We've now seen how to count the number of elements in a union of two sets and in a union of three sets. So can you work out what it would be for four sets? It's a bit harder to draw, well, it's much harder to draw the Venn diagram thing for four sets. So at this point, you see that it becomes more important to look at the pattern, which I've just rubbed out, rather than actually thinking about an example. So hopefully, we can just sort of guess from the way the pattern was going. So if I put four sets up, what we're going to do is we're going to start by taking the elements in A, the number of elements in B, plus the number of elements in C, plus the number of elements in D, right? Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to say, oops, we overcounted in the intersections, so we're going to subtract the number of elements in each pairwise intersection. So let's make sure we get them all. I should have started further along this way. Minus A intersection B, minus A intersection C, minus A intersection D, minus B intersection C, minus B intersection D, minus C intersection D. Note how I tried to do that in uh, a, a systematic way. I didn't just randomly start writing down intersections of two sets. I did it in a systematic way to make sure I got them all. I started with A intersection everything, then I moved on to B intersection everything. I didn't have to do B intersection A because I'd already done it. Then I did C intersection everything. Okay. So now I go, okay, now I've subtracted everything in the pairwise things, but oh no, that means that I've subtracted too many things because I've subtracted the stuff in the three wise intersections too many times. So I need to add those back in now. So I'm going to add back in everything in the three-way intersection A, B, C, and everything in the three-way inter intersection A, B, D, and everything in A, C, D, and then the last one that's remaining should be B, C, D. There have got to be four ways of doing that, because in each case I'm just leaving out one set, okay? But now what have I done? I've added back in the things in the four-way intersection too many times. So now I've got to take those off again. So now I've got to take off the number of things in the four-way intersection. So I start by adding up all the things in the, in the individual sets. I take off everything in the two-way intersections. I go, oops, taken off too much. Add back on the ones in the three-way intersections. Then go, oops, I've added back on too much. And then I take away the things in the four-way intersection. So I hope you can now see how you would generalize that to as many sets as you want. But the final question you might ask about this is, why is it called the inclusion-exclusion principle? Well, it's kind of because you keep alternating between adding and subtracting things, right? So you include everything, and then you say, uh-oh, I've included too many things. So then you exclude some stuff, and then you go, uh-oh, I've excluded too many things. So you include some stuff, and then you go, uh-oh, I've included too many things. So you exclude some stuff, and then you'll keep on going until you finish. So that's why it's called the inclusion-exclusion principle. It's just a fancy way of saying how you count things in a union of sets.